Welcome back to the conversation in New Central Television. Uh, if you're just joining us, we've been in the first pro half of the program, which did uh, look at uh, the Nigerian government uh, seeking a $1.5 billion loan facility from the World Bank and its implication for the economy. Uh, we now move to a significant legal development in Senegal, where opposition politician Usman Sonko can now participate in the 2024 presidential elections. A George Green stated Sonko's name on the electoral on the country's electoral list, effectively allowing him to stand as a presidential candidate in the upcoming February 2024 elections. This decision marked a pivotal moment for imprisoned Sonko, but his lawyers held this ruling as a victory, asserting that the client could once again participate in the race. However, the state expressed its intention to appeal the judge's decision, emphasizing that Sonko's eligibility as a candidate was still contested. Now, joining me this evening on the program to discuss the implications of this and uh, to delve deeper into this issue is Emo Adet, a journalist and producer with West African Democracy Radio. He joins us from the Senegalese capital, Dhaka. One well, welcome to you, uh, Emo, and thanks for joining us on the program. Um, now let's get straight to it, uh, Mr. Edit. Uh, what legal and constitutional considerations uh, do you think led the judges, uh, the the judges' decision to overturn uh, Usman Sonko's removal from the electoral rolls, and how does this reflect on Senegal's legal system? Well, first of all, it still doesn't change anything whether Sonko will be part of the election in February or not, uh, because the state will still have to appeal. This is not the final court. Uh, there is a Supreme Court just like we do have in Nigeria, and that will happen here in Dakar. So it's the state that will appeal, and then, of course, the final decision will be reached to know if Sonko's name will be included in the list already. Um, the court also considered, like you asked, uh, if you recall, the likes of Abdullah Wad and uh, Ali Fasal also had similar issues like Sonko and you know, were tried uh, at some point, were jailed for a couple of years. You know, they, they, after their, their sentencing, they came back and you know, were able to take part in this uh, forthcoming election as it is. Yeah, so the state is also looking at you know, these instances where uh, people like this are part of the election. So why not Sonko? You know, whose crime is just a uh, uh, disruption of uh, the peace in the country, uh, corruption of the youth, and, you know, waving away his long uh, case with Ajisad, the misuse here in the cast. So uh, it stands a very good chance, although, like, you know, um, all power in this case belongs to the state. And it is clear from the start that um, uh, the state doesn't want anyone to stand in the way of uh, Ahmad Ba, who is uh, possibly going to be the next president of Senegal. So uh, we still have some drama to see between now and February. Uh, maybe when the states appeal and then it rules in favor of Sonko, we may can then now say, yes, Sonko is part of the list. But for now, uh, it's really tentative. Now, Imo, uh, to what extent uh, does Sonko's potential reinstatement on the electoral rules impact the balance of power and completion in the upcoming presidential elections on the condition, like you said, uh, this is still subject to uh, appeal by the courts in yeah. Senegal. In, in the event that, you know, they say, you know, you, we, we, we stay with the judgment, is needs to go back uh, to the electoral register. How would it affect the balance of play uh, when we talk about Senegalese politics in the upcoming presidential elections? Uh, well. It's, it'll be more interesting, I tell you, because right now um, there's there's a huge dissolution of opposition. Um, in as much as there are over 240, uh, you know, uh, aspirants coming out to be candidates. Now, in Senegal, you have to get a signature of at least uh, more than 2,000 people uh, before you can aspire, uh, before you can become a candidate. For now, we have over 240 aspirants. And if eventually Sonko is, you know, absorbed in, uh, uh, it, it will change the the way the play is now, because Sonko is loved by the young people. 
But unfortunately, again, a lot by the young people who don't have a voter's card, voter's register, uh, that's a problem. You know, um, whoever becomes the next president of Senegal will likely be decided by people in the villages, people in the rural communities, you know, stakeholders, those people you call political players. They are the decision makers. Yeah, Sonko might be young, you know, it might be the favorite of young people, um, you know, the rave of the woman, but it, it doesn't really stand a good chance, I must say, from, now, from a honest perspective. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Ima, I want us to track back a bit to what you said about, I mean, it has a large support base among uh, young Senegalese, and you've also said that, you know, these guys don't necessarily have uh, the voters card. I did see the protest and how a lot of them came out uh, in defiance of the authorities <laughs> who support him uh, a few months ago when he was arrested. So why don't these young Senegalese uh, that claim to be behind him, uh, why don't they have their voters cards? What reason? Uh, I think it's a general problem cut across. Yeah, it's a general problem cut across the sub-region. I mean, if you check, uh, we had the same thing in Nigeria until uh, you know, serious education came in and we saw more of young people, you know, going in to register. It's the same thing in Senegal. You know, the protests that you talked about, uh, it's a combination of um, a general anger by the younger population. Mm -hmm. In the case where there are no jobs for them, there are no opportunities, uh, you know, the white collar jobs are even very difficult to get, you know, informing the fact that every day, every week, um, the state is recording hundreds of young people trying to migrate irregularly out of the country. So this is why I said most of them do not have, you know, voters card. Uh, we've been to the, uh, the, re the most remote part of Senegal where we had conversations with young people and realized that about 60% of them do not have voters card. Yes, they may know the name, they may know the candidates, you know, they may love the fanfare that comes to the protest the drama that comes with the mm -hmm. rallying and all of that. But it's it's sad that 60% of them do not have the voters card. And that's why I said, largely the decision will be taken by people, the elderly, those who have seen, um, who are more politically inclined. Uh, this young people that you see who came out to protest, like I said, it's a combination of so many things, so many societal ills, poverty, hunger, yeah. uh, no job, and the fact that uh, the the um, the uh, the policies or the 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 motive pushed to these young people by Sonko himself. You know the idea is here. You have French people, you have French men, you have the white running everything, and so uh, you know that's that um, we want to be uh, nationalists. We want to run things by our own. That is what is pushing to these young guys, and that prompted the protests you saw and and the acceptance, general acceptance okay. by young people. But it's still not enough to put Sonko as the president of this country. Now, it, Sonko Imo, doesn't, he doesn't stand yeah. a chance. Let, let's talk about this man, Usman Sonko. Who is he? Uh, he seems to be a thorn in the flesh of the Senegalese government. And, uh, <laughs> some have said that's why the, the government has employed uh, what you might term lawfare to frustrate its chances of being uh, the next president of Senegal. Who's Usman Sonko? How has his political career grown? Uh, are there any key milestones of his uh, in and his role in Senegalese politics? Well, like you rightly mentioned, Sonko is a thorn in the flesh uh, for the present administration. And so um, he became popular. He's very outspoken. And as a matter of fact, I can say just close to where I am right now, and so there's every security, even with him still in detention, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and um, he's going to be 50 next year. And that's why political heavyweights in the country are saying he's not ripe enough, you know, to be able to run uh, Senegal. And so if you check the history of those that have been the president of Senegal, they're usually from their 50s, you know, like Wad and the rest of them, uh, even Macky Sall, you know. So as long as you have, you have a, long, a long way to go in terms of, uh, winning the majority, the majority of you know the the technocrat, the the big men and women Be, of beyond Senegal, the youth those who dictate yeah. you know what happens even beyond the yeah, I was saying yes. that those who detect. Sorry, please, just go ahead. No, I was saying beyond this youth base needs to look beyond that and 
you know, when the uh, buy-in of uh, majority of Senegalese across all sections of society? Sorry, I didn't get the question. I, I said he needs to look beyond his uh, youth base and win uh, and get the buy-in of uh, Senegalese yes, across yes. all Absolutely. sections of the society. Yes. Now, finally, Emo, Absolutely. as we yes. wrap up, yes. uh, I mean, this, the other heavyweight. Yeah. Mm. Now, finally, Emo, as we wrap up this conversation, looking ahead uh, to the twenty twenty four presidential election, what are the potential scenarios and challenges that Senegal might face? Uh, taking into account uh, these recent developments? Well, first of all, Macky Sall is off the road. Um, he's, he's off the hook. He's not can, contesting. Can you say so that? Can you, can you say that categorically? Because he said, you know, I'm not stepping. Yes. I'm not stepping down because the law says so. I am <laughs> doing it on my own. I, I'm being benevolent to say I'm not going for a third. Time. Yes, yes, so no, clearly. You never know. This is no, politics. Clearly, clearly African he's politics. not running. Okay, I'll take no, I'll no, take no, your no, word for it. He's not running. Clearly, he's not running. He knows he knows what will come. He knows the 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 uh, the consequences of his third term if he tries to achieve that. That's why he stepped down and announced Amadou Ba, the current prime minister, you know, as the only candidate for the ruling uh, party. So uh, Bono Yaka, as it is, they have only one person, and that's why we've seen series of a uh, cabinet reshuffle in the past one month. You know, twice in 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 within a month. You know, removing those that may not want to support. Uh, Ahmad Abazatiz. Now, duration for the election, yes, a quarter. Uh, it may be very short for uh, people to campaign as it is, but they have 21 days to campaign. So now uh, all the aspirants are going about the all the regions trying to secure uh, signatures for them to be candidates. So they need at least uh, 2,000 uh, signatures for them to uh, get to that point of being a candidate. And if they don't, they drop out. Right now, over 240 people you know, are saying they want to be president of Senegal. But uh, I can tell you clearly for sure, Mark is not running this term. Thank you so much, Imo Edda. It's always a pleasure talking to you, journalist and producer with West African Democracy Thanks Radio so much. Uh, in Dakar, Senegal. Do appreciate your contribution you for and your insights. Thank you. And this is where we drop the anchor on today's edition of the conversation in the first half with a look at uh, the financial implications of Nigeria's uh, proposal uh, to the World Bank uh, for $1.5 billion loan facility. And we just uh, concluded our conversation on politics in Senegal, where the courts has said, you know, uh, Usman Sonko, leading opposition candidate, as uh, name should be restored to the electoral register. Thanks for being a part of the program. I'm Benga Aburo. I'll see you next time on The Conversation. Bye-bye. <laughs>